I didn't come to the Philippines to take work away from people. I came to the Philippines to start a business and to make work for other people so that they can have a better living. It's part of the mission that I think I'm on, that I feel I need to do. And uh, I want to bring wealth and prosperity to this community in any way that I possibly can. When we get, whoa, I fell into a hole. When we get, whoa, I fell into a hole. Fresh calamansi. They're like t teeny tiny little limes. Everything, everything in the Philippines wants to kill you. Just had kind of a Indiana Jones moment here. We stopped the grass cutter to readjust the blade. And as we were doing it, something came out of the ground. I don't know if I can find them. Oh, Oi. No. Oh, we have a lot of work to do today. So stick around. Don't want to sleep in Cause I got something to prove I gotta take what I hate And finally make a move I think of you and All the shit you don't do Well I'ma make hell of shit Hi everybody, it's Brent from Beekeeping in Paradise I want to welcome you to a brand new location This is my other farm I bought this farm about seven years ago and uh, this was supposed to be the home of Shelby Honey Farm, but didn't work out that way. Um, when I got, or when my wife and I bought this place, there was nothing here. You can hear that there's uh, some worshiping going on in the background. We got kind of a rock and roll church next door. It's really cool. They're they're jamming and. Uh, Praising the Lord over there, and uh, they're really getting into it. And uh, <clears throat> so, uh, that, this is the first time I've been out here when there was a service going on. And I'm excited. I didn't know what kind of a church it was, but uh, they are rocking, they are jamming, and praising the Lord, and I am really getting into it. This is just under one half of an acre. At the time when we got it, we thought that this would be a great location for our retirement house eventually down the road um, and then that kind of evolved in after we built our other house in the city center we decided to turn this into a mini farm and a, the bee farm there was nothing here there were very few homes um, it was a lot of agriculture and we thought it would be a great place for the bees. But you can look up and down this street, and I'll turn around. It is nothing but homes. There are, oh, there's home after home after home over here. And on the other side as well, if you go down that uh, ridge over there, this street is just packed house after house. And then on the other side, when you go down, our, our property goes downhill, we're now like surrounded by residential homes. Well, me being a responsible good neighbor, I don't want to put 50 or 100 or 200 beehives in a residential neighborhood. That's not being a good neighbor. So we had to rethink things. And uh, so immediately what we did though, was we started to turn this into a fruit orchard. We have planted calamansi, we've planted uh, mangoes, we've planted cacao, we've planted avocados, rambutan, um, uh, jackfruit, it's all here. This is where we started those and those trees are getting to be about three years old, uh, two to three years old, some of them. We, we did. We did two years of planting. We also have uh, dwarf coconut trees here, and I think a, maybe a couple of bananas that were already here, and perhaps a uh, papaya tree. But uh, yeah, this is 
this was the original home of the Hun Shelby Honey Farm, and this is the first time I'm getting a chance to show it to you. And the reason we're here today is because we need to mow the grass. Check this out. It is waist high. So we do have uh, fence posts up and around and all of this overgrown area is ours and it needs to be cleared today. So I don't know how long the church service is going to go on, but we brought a weed eater. I feel a little bad about turning on a weed eater during the church service, but um, if they finish up, then we're going to get that thing cranked up and uh, see if this Lazada purchase will actually work. Better than uh, the earth auger. That one's a little disappointing to me. Hopefully this one ends up being better. So that's where we're at. This is where we're at. And uh, we have a lot of work to do today. So stick around. Okay, well, we got some help today. We've got a uh, local fella out here who's been cutting this grass uh, well, for the past seven years, ever since we bought it. Since we haven't lived here, somebody else has had to maintain it. So we've been paying some locals to do that. And uh, this guy is out here right now. He knows where all the trees are located. He's not gonna cut them down. I might cut them down if I was out there doing it. But he's got our new grass cutter that we got from Lazada. And it is a first time for me. I've never seen a four stroke uh, grass cutter before. And this thing is super quiet. You can barely hear the engine run. It's a backpack model. Um, couldn't tell you how many horsepower, but it's got a flexible shaft that comes around and then goes into a uh, solid steel uh, shaft with the cutter head on the end. Uh, throttle is by your hand. And uh, so far, and it's only been, he's only been at it for a minute or two, but he's going pretty well. We'll follow and see if we can see how it's going and you can hear just how quiet this thing is so far I'm pretty impressed and we get into the lemons yeah look at these look at these blooms on here Inky's just ended blooming this one is still blooming that's a good sign that's what I'm looking for there's still blooms down here. And these are producing fruit. Okay. Lemons here. Lemon here. Can you hear that weed eater? That weed eater's pretty quiet. Looks a lot like weed eating in Indiana too. I'll tell you, when we first got this place, this 1,660 square meters that we've got here seemed really big. Uh, compared to the two hectares we've got in uh, the other barangay, this doesn't look so big anymore. And uh, I think we made a wise choice by switching gears away from this is the main honey farm and getting the new farm just had kind of a indiana jones moment here we stopped the grass cutter to readjust the blade and as we were doing it something came out of the ground i don't know if i can find them Oi! oh they're still here check this out Yeah, I'm trying to get 
What the heck is that thing? The world's largest millipede? It's huge. There were two of them. <laughs> trying to get away. But yeah, we were just standing here. And all of a sudden, this thing came. And a, and a friend of his just came slithering out. I looked down and I saw the girth of that thing. I thought for sure it was a snake where we could only see part of it. But then I saw the other end. It looks pointy at that end. I don't know if it has a stinger. Or what? But that thing is gross. <laughs> Labud in Visaya. I don't know in English either. I think millipede. But it was a giant one. And I don't like it. But uh, who knows what else we're going to find in three feet of grass here. It just, it just goes to show you that you don't know what you're going to find if you go walking around in hip, in hip deep grass. There are thorns in there. There are sharp things, sharp grass that will cut you. Everything. Everything in the Philippines wants to kill you. Nah, not kidding. Not true. It's just you have to be careful. There's a... Uh, Sharp stuff all over the world. Uh, thorns, sticker bushes, you know, poisonous this, poisonous that, poisonous plants, poisonous uh, spiders and snakes. We got our fair share in the United States, so I'm not complaining. I'm not saying this place is any more dangerous than any place else on the earth. Oh, wow. Now that we can get through here. Calamansi? Yeah. Nice. Are they ripe? I think we need to cut this. This is too tall. Yeah. Yeah, we have to cut this like here and then make it bushier. I, uh... Hmm? Hmm. Mm. <laughs> mm. That is delicious. Mm. And I should have brought another bag. Fresh calamansi. They're like t teeny tiny little limes. They taste a lot like a lime, but they're a little bit sweeter. They're easier to eat straight up. Um, a lot of my friends and family know that uh, I will eat citrus peel with no problem. Uh, the little cutie oranges, those things, those are just bite-sized treats for me. I love citrus peel. I love the bitter flavor of the peel. And these, even with the tiny little seeds inside, are just an amazing little snack and the flavor is outrageously good sweet and tart at the same time mm. these will go in our our dip with uh, barbecue or uh, so many other dishes we mix this juice with uh, vinegar and soy sauce it makes a great dip for meat sao sao we say here so i'm not prepared i should have a fanny pack or my backpack with me so we can fill this fill it up i'll be right back there's a lot on this bush or i guess at this point it's a tree 
but uh, this is what we were hoping for. And we planted, how many of these are there? Did we plant 20? No. 20? Uh, calamansi here? No. I think about 20, right? Yeah, so we've got about 20 of these bushes. We should be having a pretty bountiful harvest if we can catch them uh, in time. So, all right, I'm going to go get a bag. I'll get a bag and be right back. Fresh fruit from your own farm. Nothing better. Oh, and it's one of my favorites too. I'll be really excited when we get... Whoa, I fell into a hole. I'll be really excited when we get some mangoes, rambutan, some of those others. Is this okay? All right, you hold that. I'll reach up there. Well, that was fun. We have a lot of calamansi now. Mm. I think I need one more. Delicious. Mm. Wow. What is this? Lemon? Uh, lemon. Chinese lemon. Ooh. Chinese lemon? Look at that. That's cool. Beautiful tree. Another one? Look at that. Yeah. Lemonade coming up. Or a little garnish for fish. We're making some good progress. Oh, there's a long way to go. Hopefully when this gets finished, I'll be able to make it out here on a regular basis and take care of these things on my own. But I'm hesitant to do that because these guys have been doing a great job of taking care of this place over the last seven years since we've owned it. And I don't want to take work away from them. I didn't come to the Philippines to take work away from people. I came to the Philippines to start a business and to make work for other people so that they can have a better living. It's part of the 
mission that I think I'm on, that I feel I need to do. And uh, I want to bring wealth and prosperity to this community in any way that I possibly can. And uh, by me coming out here and doing all of my own labor, even though that's how I feel inside that I need to be doing it, this is my farm, this is my activity, and I'm well, certainly capable of it. I might be a little tumble. I might be a little bit fat right now, but uh, I've been losing a little bit of weight, and I'm getting, I'm trying to get into better shape. Every day I'm more active, but uh, I'm not here to take work away from people. I'm not here to put anybody out of a job. I'm here to employ people. That's one of my biggest goals. And if I can foster goodwill and uh, bring joy to people by uh, giving them a sense of accomplishment and uh, pride and earning a living, then that's really part of my mission and that's what I want to do. So I'm a little torn. On the inside, on the inside, I want to be taking care of the place. I know that I'm physically fit enough to do these jobs, but at the same time, I'm not here to take work away from people. So, uh, I'm torn. Leave a comment. What do you think? Keep hiring it out or get off my butt and do the work myself. That's the comment, that's the, that's the question of the day. Do I get off my butt and do more of the work myself or do I keep hiring out, hiring it out to the locals? Um, it's a, I, I'm pretty sure I know how I'm gonna proceed, but it's, it's tough to reconcile in, in your own head when you've been self-sufficient for most of your life and you do things on your own. And it's just, it's hard to sit back and watch somebody do a job that you're capable of doing. Like, I want to go and do it. Yeah, this is a really beautiful place. And now that I'm in the back half, you can see where we came in over there. You can see the truck. There's our banana trees over here. Our property does dip down to that low section. It gets fairly narrow back there, but you can see how we've got the fruit trees lining the perimeter of the property all the way around. And there's some scattered on the interior of the property, but for the most part, we uh, had the trees planted uh, uh, towards the outside edges of the, of the property just because we didn't know what we'd be working on, what we'd be doing on the interior, if we'd be building anything right away. But to be continued. Right. Cousin Yik is getting into the act. She wants to try the grass cutter.
that's addicting. You get started and you don't want to stop. <laughs> you start seeing progress and you just want to keep going. But uh, it, it wasn't as heavy, but my arm is really heavy. It wasn't very, it didn't feel very heavy. So I was happy with that. I can definitely. Well, you knew I wouldn't be able to help myself. I had to, I can't buy a new tool and not, not check it out for myself. Um, put the backpack on. Boy, that thing starts right up. I know it's new, but I think it's because it's a four stroke and um, it's quiet. And uh, I didn't think that, I mean, I only did it for hmm, let's see, maybe a half an hour. And we only videotaped it for uh, a few minutes, but I got quite a bit done and I don't feel anything in my back yet. Um, but I could understand how a little bit more padding in the back would definitely be a help and uh, might be something I have to look into uh, modifying before we take it out again. Uh, we're going to kind of take turns and try and get through this and uh, see how far we can get today. But uh, yeah, that was, that was fun. I enjoyed doing that and uh, worked up a little bit of a sweat. Definitely need a drink of water now. So that's my review after using it for a little while. Um, I liked it and uh, I will definitely uh, keep it and keep using it to keep the bee yard free and clear of weeds. Okay, back to work. I just wanted to give you my own little review on that one. Okay, no two ways about it. I need a riding lawnmower. I just took another hour turn on the weed whacker with the metal blade attached and uh, <clears throat> we made a dent in it but we are not halfway done yet but hacking through three foot tall weeds with a metal blade on a weed whacker even though it's a really nice weed whacker it takes a lot out of you especially especially the water that thing, I had two of those and they were full when I left this morning and now they're both nearly dry. So um, we are done for the day. My publing is going to come out tomorrow. He's going to hold on to the machine overnight and he'll get started early in the morning. He was saying if I, if I picked up on it correctly they're going to come out about 5 o'clock in the morning. Um, which is a good idea because it'll still just be in the, low, in the uh, mid 70s at that point. Um, but right now it's 2.30 in the afternoon and I sure hope my sunblock helped uh, and it was working. If, it, if my sunblock wasn't working, I'm going to be hurting big time tomorrow. But uh, I have learned a few things since I've been here. Don't go out without the hat. I'm lucky that uh, I don't have any bald spots yet, but uh, uh, I can definitely tell that uh, having the extra shade on the head helps. Um, do not forget the sunscreen. Even if you're one of those uh, fellows who said, like me, who said, I enjoy being in the sun. I like it. Well, brother, this sun will get you. You got to wear your sunscreen um, and a heavy duty one at that. So um, the sun will burn you very fast if you're not protected. Um, I'm learning today that uh, even though it's hot and sunny, I'm way more comfortable wearing the jeans and the boots than I was yesterday at the other farm uh, wearing shorts and the boots. I've got my jeans tucked into my boots, uh, which makes sense for many reasons, to keep things from crawling up your pant leg. Um, but uh, the rubber boots don't chafe on your legs that way. And uh, somehow I don't feel as hot um, with, with the pants on. I think maybe it's because the uh, sun was baking down on my legs yesterday. Um, so little by little, even though I've been coming here for the past 19 years on vacation, um, this is my first experience with living here. Um, and I'm learning things. I wanted to learn things when I got here. I intended to learn things. I am learning things. 
uh, the hat, sunscreen, aloe vera. Make sure you bring some of that with you when you come. Because um, there will be a day that you forget your sunscreen. And uh, the next day, you will definitely need the aloe vera gel. So, I think I'm about rested. And uh, we're going to head back to the house and see how things are going over there. But until next time, remember, I'm Brent. This is Beekeeping in Paradise. Remember, wherever you are in the world, if you've got bees, you are definitely beekeeping in paradise. Be well. Be kind. Be safe. God bless.